What's up everyone, back for another beer review and today I will be reviewing a beer from the Anderson Valley Brewing Company and they are out of Boonville, California and this is their Winter Solstice Seasonal Ale and this is the 2021 release. So they are calling this one an ale with natural flavor added and on the website they are listing this as a winter warmer. It comes in at 6.9% alcohol by volume, 6 IBUs at the time of review and this can is just under 3 months old. So. Winter Solstice from Anderson Valley. This is a beer that I have had a couple different times before, uh, but not in the last seven or eight years. It's been a long while. Uh, this is one of the first like winter warmers, winter seasonal ales that I ever had. And I always have enjoyed this one. Uh, always found it not like overly spicy and really nice. Um, and today, as I'm posting this review, is the winter solstice of 2021, which means it's the beginning of winter. Tuesday, December 21st is the beginning of winter here in 2021 so i thought it makes sense to post this video on winter solstice here we are anyway don't know what's in this one because it just says ale with natural flavor added uh tried to find out the ingredients they really don't say anything other than like generic spices as a tasting note but uh like i said i don't remember spices being huge in this one so yeah anyway this is pouring out kind of a barley wine-esque in color kind of has like that deep caramel almost mahogany type of look to it but yeah that looks nice that definitely looks nice. Looks like a winter warmer of some kind. Uh, you know, it has a little bit of like, there's chill haze, but there's also a little bit of haziness, but you know, there's a little bit of see-through here. Uh, not crystal clear, uh, filtered to some degree. Um, has about a finger of a straight up khaki colored head. Uh, looking pretty creamy. Yeah, it's a nice winter warmer. Let's get a uh, nose on it. So yeah, this just has a lot of huge malt qualities to it. There's toasted like brown bread, caramel, toffee, a little bit of molasses, touch of vanilla. This honestly smells like a mini barley wine. Uh, there's a little bit of dried fruit in here. Almost, I'm not really getting a lot of spices in this one or really any spices. It has almost like a, a fruitcake kind of quality to it. A little bit of dried fruit, like a, like a cherry, dried cherry. Maybe a raisin, date, fig. Those types of uh, dried fruits. Maybe like a dried apricot. Yeah, this is super, super, super malt forward. This reminds me, like I said, a lighter, lower ABV kind of barley wine or old ale, something to that degree. There's a fruitiness, like a dried fruit character on top of a lot of different uh, confectionery malt, uh, but also like caramelized kind of sugars as well. It smells really good. Maybe a touch if I'm looking for it, like a cinnamon, maybe an allspice. This is really, the malt character is leading the way in here. There's almost no hop character to speak of. Uh, maybe a slight, like, earthy kind of tinge. But overall, this is all about the malt. And that's kind of like what winter warmers are. is like malt with a little bit of spice. This is malt with pretty much no spice. But it smells pretty good. So let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Mm. What is that? That's interesting. So I just got hit with two different flavors that are completely different to one another, but I like it. I do like it. Body in this one is 6.9%. This is like medium, higher side of medium. Has a little bit of half, not even 7%. It's nice. Body's, body is thick enough for something of this ABV. Like it's a proper, I think, maybe even a little bit bigger than it needs to be. In the mouthfeel, there's definitely carbonation unmistakable but it's really really smooth on the palate really nice from that um hang on i, I, I just stopped mid-sense because this is a really weird beer characteristic but anyway as i say it's really smooth from that aspect um the taste the nose it kind of hit me right at the front of the palate there is caramel there's toffee a touch of molasses vanilla those dried fruits that's like the first third of the palate like i'm like oh yeah no the nose carried over Right after that, it turns into like a vanilla cream ale, like soda, like a soda pop, vanilla cream ale. It's kind of what I got. But then on the finish, there's this earthy, very distinctive tea-like finish. And from what I can gather of what I've had personally, and we're talking, you know, in my lifetime, I don't know exactly how many beers I drank. I think unique check-ins on a tap, I'm at like 4,100, somewhere around there. But I didn't start really going hard on a tap to like the middle of the 2010s, like, 2014 2015 esque so the prior four years 
2000, late 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, really didn't, like five years of not putting stuff on tap. So I would gather, I, I've drank at least 5,000 unique beers, if not closer to say 7,000. And I will say that whenever I get tea-like finish in a beer that doesn't have tea, it's typically from the hops that have faded. A lot of times I'll get it in old school, like Pale Ales and IPAs where it's three, four months old, the hops have faded and you get like that tea-like uh, kind of finish and slight bitterness. That might be the case here. This is under three months old, but I don't think it is. I don't know. It might just be from the hops themselves. Maybe they're using you know, old school English hops that give you that kind of like tea-like bitterness. or like has almost like a copper coin type. stuff. It has like English ale vibes to it. Really cool. It's sweet up front with all that malt, but on the back end, semi-dry. I'd say mildly to moderate uh, in the terms of the bitterness, but I think the dryness is the thing that kind of stops the sweetness to some degree. Tell you what, listen, I'm really not getting any spices. And they say ale with natural flavor added. Don't know what that means exactly. It could mean a lot of things. Maybe they are brewing this one with molasses or toffee or something, right? Maybe they're throwing spices in there. But typically when you brew a beer like this and you call it a winter warmer and you're brewing it with spices, you'll just say ale with spices. We'll say natural flavor added. So I don't know. I am really getting no spices out of this. If I had to stretch for a spice, I would just say all spice, kind of a little bit of an all spice. But I'm putting this one down pretty easily. Here's the thing. The flavors are fun. They're good. I like them. But there's nothing like kind, like too crazy about this one. That vanilla cream ale is cool. The tea-like uh, finish is cool. But I'm not blown away by this. But I've never was blown away by this one. But I always enjoyed it for what it is. Because, again, I, I remember this one being lighter on the spice. And that's because probably there are no spices. Or if they are, they're just coming from the malts or the hops. Um, if they do put spices in it, at this point, just under three months old, the spices have pretty much died out for me. But at the end of the day, yeah, this kind of drinks almost like a light barley wine to some extent. But it's good. I enjoy it. So I have no problem giving Anderson Valley uh, their Winter Solstice Seasonal Ale the 2021 release. We'll go high 3.75 out of 5. We'll go 3.8 out of 5. I think that is a very fair score for that beer. And I'm going to have no problem drinking the rest of this one. Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure that back in the day I gave this one around a 375, so I'm kind of sticking with my guns uh, with this beer. Um, I've, I like this one. I like their Summer Solstice, which I think is just a cream ale. Uh, but yeah, I, if you buy this one and you're looking for a, like a spice explosion, I don't think this is the one that you want to pick up. But if you're looking for something that's almost 7%, has really nice malt flavors, and will keep you warm on a cold winter's night, this is it. Price and availability. Uh, 12 bucks a six-pack in my uh, neck of the woods, so... Less than two bucks a can, or I think it's like eleven ninety nine a six pack. So right around two bucks a can. That's a fair price for something that's six point nine percent. The availability, I have no idea with Anderson Valley. They're all over the place. I know a lot of people can get them. Uh, we don't get as much from them as we used to. We get this. We get their summer solstice. We get some of their gozas, like their blood orange goza, uh, a couple other ones. But uh, we don't get like their whole range of beers like we used to. And that's kind of the case for a lot of these old school craft breweries uh, where there's limited shelf space and so many local breweries now where like it's tough for a beer like this to be on the opposite side of the country here in the U.S., this being a California brewed beer, me being in New York, basically on the East Coast, like the fact that they're still, they still have a presence here in New York State is cool because I, I think they make some solid beer and I always enjoy trying stuff from them. So if you've had this one before, let me know what you think about 6.9%. A little bit of a warming into the chest, but nothing on the palate. It's very hard for me to uh, really talk about ABVs from a beer that's, you know, sub 7%. You just usually don't get them nowadays. Breweries hide them so well. This one's an old school beer, has a little bit of a warming uh, quality. Maybe that's on purpose. Maybe maybe they want the alcohol to be a little bit more prevalent because it is a winter warmer and you're supposed to drink this one to let you warm you up on uh, a cold winter's night. So anyway, if you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. Appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here in the Beer Patrol. To the next one, cheers.